Rick Bartosik, Technical Marketing Engineer with Juniper. I focus on the EX switching platform um, and primarily on the campus fabric technologies. And so what, what Abby talked about with respect to wired assurance uh, dovetails right into a campus fabric architecture. So ca campus fabric to us, the terminology is EVP and VXLAN. So it's an EVP and VXLAN architecture in, in different modes. We'll talk about, we'll dive deep into these modes, different, you know, different silos. Um, but managed through the MIST cloud. So a customer today, we've got hundreds of EVP and VXLAN deployments in data centers as well as campuses that are not MIST managed, right? They're actually CLI managed, maybe Ansible playbooks, and I've built those. What I really appreciate about this solution is the fact that it extrapolates all the, all the complexity. So when you're building a multi-protocol BGP instantiation, you've got route targets and route distinguishers and all kinds of policy that have to be applied. What MIST does is it really simplifies that. So the goal of today is to educate you guys on just what the different architectures are. Um, we're gonna go through a demo of a build with my other partner in crime, Rohan. And then I hope to see all of your hands when I ask the question, can you build a fabric through the MIST cloud? If you had, you know, the VLAN information, if you wanted to isolate traffic into different routing instances, and you knew where, where the ports were connected, could you, build, could you build the fabric? And the answer, hopefully, is yes. And if the answer is no, then we haven't done our job, right? So um, let's dive in. Okay, so why Campus Fabric? You guys may have seen, uh, and by the way, we're not the only one who does EVP and VXLAN. What I do want to stress is our experience with EVP and VXLAN. We'll talk about a slide in the next one or two slides that dives into um, the amount of time we spent building and working with the contributors with an IETF with respect to EVPN, the work we've done in our data center CRDC team, who's been building EVP and VXLAN networks for eight years now. And so we've taken a lot of their expertise and, and blood, sweat, and tears and pulled that into our solution. So these are the four top pillars, challenges that when we say legacy, sometimes that word is misused. Let's talk about your standard layer two network with spanning tree. That's a typical instantiation today, right? So if we're, if we're dealing with that and you've got boundaries and so forth where layer two and layer three exist, one of the challenges right now, and this wasn't the case a couple years ago, is, is micro segmentation. So customers are, are, you know, there, there's a proliferation of IoT devices. If you look at retail, uh, various industries where they are bringing devices in that are headless, lack of security, they might, can only communicate within the same broadcast domain. So what these, what these enterprises are struggling with without invoking all kinds of ACLs and pushing traffic through firewalls is how do they segment traffic within the actual broadcast domain? And the answer to that typically is private VLAN. Right, you build a private VLAN and you can look inside that broadcast domain and say, I see these devices and I can, I can build a, a private uh, primary VLAN. I can then build a community VLAN underneath that, which absorbs the intelligence of the primary VLAN. And then I can build isolated VLANs. So that's three separate types of VLANs you build with private VLANs. And although they, we have seen them interoperate with, between vendors, they're, it's difficult and there's no, there's no scale. So at a, at a minimum use case, what we find is customers, just to tackle the IoT use case for, for intra-VLAN security, they're looking at Campus Fabric. And the reason for that is for a technology called group-based policy. So group-based policy leverages the VXLAN header. Abhi, we're gonna show, we're gonna demonstrate that. We'll talk about where that is. It's a 16-bit header within the VXLAN construct itself. And we are one of the few, if only, vendor to leverage that true header, the actual GBP group-based policy header, to, to ascertain how we want to tag traffic amongst various criteria and apply that across an entire campus fabric, whereby we don't, now don't have to pass traffic through a firewall. We certainly can if you wanted to segment traffic between routing instances, right? But within a fabric itself, within a VLAN, Microsegmentation strategy is one of the top reasons why customers are looking at fabrics. The second is ACL usage. So that kind of dovetails off the first piece there where if, I've, if I'm building private VLANs and, or, I, or I'm pushing traffic back through firewalls, there is a tendency for ACL sprawl. 
And when we look at the demonstration, hopefully what you'll see is a simplification of how this technology is actually built and presented to the end user. So the other question would be, hopefully, can you build a micro-segmentation strategy once the fabric is built? And I, I hope to see all of your hands, right? Because it, there, there are, it, this is very complex. This technology is, is extremely complex under, under the covers. When you're building EVP and VXLAN, you are, you're worried about VLAN to VNI mapping. You're worried about scale. You're worried about, okay, wait a minute now. I, I, so I'm learning a MAC address off a port, but now I'm, I'm taking that MAC address and I'm tunneling it across the network. How, how in the world do I troubleshoot that? And that's where, that's where MIST and Marvis come in play. Yes, question. I was actually going to ask about that because one of the reasons, because VXLAN might be pushed away by some people in the enterprise mm -hmm. is because, yes, it is technically deployable and it would bring a plethora of benefits, but who's going to manage that? Right. Because then you would need a bunch of knowledgeable engineers just to do even level one troubleshooting because not everybody's going to understand VXLine right off the hood or, or VGP or right. why is this MAC address here and here and why is it flopping and this type of stuff. Yep. But then, then it would have to come in a way, I assume that's what comes after with Marvis, that it gets simplified because otherwise then you are setting yourself, well, for failure, right? Because then, okay, I deployed it and now, well, while everything is good, it's wonderful, but now I have to troubleshoot it and, and well, you're getting yourself an up rope to put it around your neck. Then. Right, right, yep. So uh, if you're doing this without mist, we're giving, we're giving you enough rope to hang yourself effectively, right? Mm -hmm. And I've deployed these fabrics, so I've got quite a bit of experience and appreciation for what MIST does. So first of all, the deployment of the fabric, we're going we're gonna to show that. And the whole idea is there to extrapolate the, the, the complexity away from the build, mm -hmm. assuming you've got your basic information in front of you. Day two then becomes critically important because you're only building a fabric one time, right? You might be adding a couple access switches, maybe a couple of core distribution switches, but um, mm -hmm. your day two approach, we're going to talk about that with, with Marvis. So in my humble opinion, what, Mar what MIST does is it not only simplifies the deployment, it, it helps with, um, so if I, if I want to learn where a MAC address is in a network, in the Juno's operating system, I run the same commands, whether I'm on a layer two network or an EVP and VXLAN network. So that's one thing we've done is we've, we've actually tried to take the same operational structure approach pre EVP and VXLAN into today, but now we're pulling that into MIST. So when I build the, when I build the fabric, I can immediately see my BGP establishments, I can see the, um, the updates between the devices. I can understand uh, whether or not my VRF is up or my VRF is down all through the MIST construct without really having to understand what is my route target? Sh what should my route target strategy should yeah. be? What should my import and export policies, what should they really be? Um, what should my VLAN to VNI mapping, what should that really be? So we, we simplify all of that. Now, that's not to say there are some customers out there that don't want to dive deeper, don't want to dive deeper. And so we'll, we'll, talk, we'll, we'll kind of yes. pull that out when yes, we The real value is actually on crunching the information because if you mentioned earlier that you are going to get the same output in with this technology or the other, then, then, then it's not about this output, it's how do you crunch that information just to provide the insights and all the, that is correct. the yes. simplified things, right? Yep, that's yes. the focus. Yep. You will see us yeah. showcase if you're looking for a MAC address somewhere. Yes. You're no longer look, going to the ARP table somewhere, diving deeper to the shell. Before you move on, I understand that you want to move on here. Anytime I see a slide like this, I want to push back just a little bit and say, Push okay, back, man. Um, you say that it solves many campus problems. You say it's great across. Is there a customer use case where this doesn't make sense? Uh, yes. Uh, I think where customers, so that's a great question, actually. Where customers are, um, where they don't have VLAN sprawl, where, they're, where their access switches are primarily isolated VLANs and, and they're routing, and they don't have micro-segmentation requirements. In that case, I wouldn't position this technology. Now, I'd position MIST to manage, assess, to, to manage the network, absolutely. Because MIST is, so Campus Fabric is the EVP and VXLAN build and the management of a v, EVP and VXLAN network. But, but MIST Wired Assurance will do that as well as your standard layer two or your standard routed network. So if I've got access switches, whether they're you know, virtual chassis and I've got layer three boundaries at the access and I, I, all of my security requirements are maintained pushing traffic through a firewall northbound, I wouldn't position this at all. 
I don't so so I don't have any loop free issues, right? Because I'm routing. I I have um, uh, I've got equal cost multipass, so I'm using all pass anyways, right? And um, I don't have the the issues with VLAN sprawl. So that's that's a, and and we see those customers. We see them. Are there any technical use limitations around things like multicast or yes. other types of things that yes. say like maybe you don't much, have to go that direction? How much time do you have? Yeah. <laughs> so so ab, up there, ab, ab, yeah. so I'm 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 going to answer your question as I'm changing. That's the fine. Yeah, please. No, 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 no. That's a great question. So multicast would be a uh, that is something we are solving right now as we speak. So there are so EVPN introduces eight new route types. That's exciting, right? Eight new ways instead of having one MAC address. <laughs> You now have eight route types, one through eight, and six through, six through eight are multicast specific, okay, and they're built for uh, an eVPN network. We have a technology called Optimized Internet OISM. What that means is that if you're building multicast, push it close to the access layer as possible. So that's where you want to build an IP clause with VXLAN. And then those, those access switches actually have incredible intelligence and can participate in the multicast leaves, joins, prunes, et cetera. And they know exactly where to send these packets across the network because they're using selective multicast. So it's very daunting though, because then you have scale. So, um, and I don't mean to minimize that. Yeah. That that's that's very important. I just want to ask because I've heard the VXLAN pad pitch yeah. for years now, right? But there's always been those like use cases that have been challenging. You so say you're no, no on multicast. No question. Simplify that. Absolutely, no question. And IPv6, I'll throw that in there as well, yeah. right? Um, I so we are we are a leading contributor in IETF. Uh, many standards we've deployed, uh, you, you see this here, and we've, once again, I can't stress how important it is that we've taken what we've done in, in the data center world. There's a lot of, lot of pull in from data center into the campus piece, anycast, addressing, um, MTU sizes. You wouldn't believe the different MTU sizes you can have in a network with jumbo frames, right? So we've taken all that stuff and minimized it. We don't ask the question, we just do it in the background for the, for the consumer. Okay. Um, great discussions, by the way. I love the questions. So let's let's look at the different architectures, and we will then bring up a couple of examples per architecture. Then we'll get into the fun, which is a demo. Uh, and I'm, I've got my toes crossed. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> so, anyways, the first three three architectures: EVP and multi-homing is our first. Think of that as a collapsed core replacement. You guys have seen. I'm sure you've seen uh, architectures where. The, the access layer, the routers, the firewalls are coming into a collapsed core, typically two bigger devices interconnected, right? They might be running MC lag, maybe they're running VRP of some sort, maybe they're running spanning tree and they're just doing multiple spanning tree instances and do, doing what they can to load balance even in odd VLANs. Well, that's what this use case does, is it targets that approach. Um, and what it, what it, um, what it really focuses on is the ability to uh, keep your access layer where it is. So if it's running standard lag LACP, that doesn't change. That's going to be consistent. We, uh, we, uh, we, uh, uh, we target the main core operating devices. We introduce EVP and VXLAN between those two devices. This can also scale up to four devices horizontally. So if you think about MC lag and these other technologies, typically it's two. Mm -hmm. If you have to build another pod, that's another pod managed separately, another two. So MIST will manage up to four in a collapsed core. And that could be larger switch. It could be a mid-tier switch for us. It just depends on what the scale is. Quite honestly, it depends on what the fiber plan is as well, right? So that's the use case for EVPN multi-homing is really targeting the collapsed core. Campus core distribution is where um, the, the customer still wants to keep the access layer the same. Typically, these are, th those are both layer two instantiations, by the way. Layer two to the left on EVPN multi-homing, layer two at core, core distribution. Um, they, hopefully they're Juniper switches, as long as they're LACP lag, that's all we care about, right? So the replacement technology, once again, doesn't touch the most expensive part of the network, which is the access layer. Core distribution introduces EVP and VXLAN at different layers for scale. So if they wanted to scale this horizontally, they can begin to do that. Place layer three at the distribution layer or at the core layer, give them the chance whatever makes most sense, and there's discovery that happens in, in all of this. And then the final campus fabric IP clause is where we pull EVP and VXLAN all the way down to the access layer. That would be mostly a greenfield opportunity, right? So a, a new building, a new, um, a new deployment, we would, we would be looking at that. 
and EVP and VXLAN comes down to the access layer, and that's really where you begin to look at micro-segmentation. So when customers, if, they're, if they've got a .1x strategy, they're plugging devices into their access layer, maybe they're using Forescout, Aruba, ClearPass, Cisco ICE, Free Radius, what have you, to authenticate those devices. We can take that authentication, we'll show this, and apply a tag to authentication. And now that tag moves with the device no matter where it is within the fabric, and now we can actually micro-segment. And we leverage that VXLAN transport, and we leverage that, leverage that open standard-based way of actually exchanging tags, these, these what we call scalable group tags, across an EVP and VXLAN network. I, I do want to dig into micro-segmentation a little bit, because more and more the, the network is being relied upon to be that sensor yep. enforcement point uh, for security. So you had mentioned how you group those devices. So you're, when a device gets plugged into the network, how is that, um, how is that tagging happening? So you're relying yep. on a radius solution? We, we, we don't have to rely on a radius solution, but we, we certainly can. So let's say, you've got, let's say you've got Forescout somewhere in the core of your network, right? And, and so the, the Juniper switching architecture, which would be either our 4100s or 4400s, would have a handshake already with that Forescout device. So when a user um, plugs in, right, that radius authentication method would, would get passed to Forescout. Forescout would, would, would authenticate that message. Within their database, they'll actually have a group-based tag applied to that group or to that supplicant, okay? And that's a standard AVP, a standard radius attribute value pair. That information gets pushed back to the switch. Now the switch says, ah, for this MAC address, or this IP address, or this VLAN, I'm going to apply this tag. And now that tag is commensurate with that user no matter where it's located within the fabric. So traffic within the fabric, within the VXLAN construct, we use that tag to, pol to police traffic. So if I've got VLAN over here 100 and VLAN 100 over here, and I'm extending that VLAN, and these devices are, shouldn't really be talking at all, they're IoT devices, put them in different tags. And, and just, you know, through their authentication and block that at ingress. Okay, and so, so to, to take that a step further, I, from what I'm hearing, we have uh, options of either ACL or tag-based. Yes. Um, as far as, and I'm assuming the, the ACL enforcement, is it packet ingress into the it is It is ingress. It could be ingress or egress. Most people are going to choose ingress. Yep. Okay. And, and tag enforcement, is that at? Can you do tag enforcement at ingress, or yes. does the packet have to travel? To no, no, tag enforcement at ingress. Yes, Interesting. sir. Interesting, okay, yep. Yep. thank you. Yep, and, and that's important because the fabric is a BGP fabric. It's a, it's a multi-protocol BGP fabric, right? And so we use things like BGP communities to instruct the far end device, hey, here's a tag, right? We're using things like type five prefix routes. So we're using the standards already there. We're just leveraging them to, to share information across the devices. So when you, when you think about interoperability and EANTC, you guys are familiar with EANTC? They're a third-party consortium that does all kinds of EVPN, MPLS. They, they pit the vendors against each other, right? Not in steel cages at all, but, um, you know, can your stuff talk to this vendor? And we're always pulling back the curtain, exposing what we're able to do through a standards-based consortium. So I'd, I'd go there to validate what I'm saying here. So you, you look confused, though. I mean, are you, are you, you good? No, I'm just, I'm, I'm comparing with other platforms and, and where to handle that, in, that enforcement point. Because to me, traditional network security, you want to drop that packet as soon as possible. Absolutely. Why let it travel? No, no, no question. No Why question. let it travel through the network if it's just going to end up? No, no question. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if for egress enforcement, so the reason why you do egress enforcement, just since we're all friends here, is scale. Right. It's, it's, it scales much higher. Ingress enforcement requires more typically TCAM instantiation, but it's absolutely preferred. Because you need to pull down that full yes. picture to know you need to pull down the what full devices, you need to know all your devices, source and destination. That's right. Or your tags, sorry. That's right. But I think that would be better than letting then the traffic go to the other of side course. of the fabric, wasting of course. bandwidth, so you can drop it on the other right. leaf. So like I said, there's always... There, somewhere else. It, Nothing's, nothing's for free, yeah. right? right? So if I want to tag ingress and I want to enforce ingress, which is what I prefer to do, then there's a scale, you know, we just, and this, these are all standards, right? We're all using, for the, for the most part, the same Broadcom chipsets, right? For the most part, we are, and they all have the same scale limitations. So 
Um, discovery is important. When we talk to customers about micro-segmentation, it's very important to understand the differences between ingress and egress, just from that perspective. But um, yes, you want to drop it at ingress. That, that's our that's our. How do you help your, or how do you guide your customers understand those scale limits? So, so the beauty is we work with our partners a lot to do that, right? We are, we are a huge partner-based consortium. So we trust those folks. But at the end of the day, myself, Abby, the other folks in this room, um, we constantly show the technology so they're comfortable with it. And then we are constantly doing QA and scale, scale testing. So we work with, uh, we understand are you using radius if you're not? Um, what, kind of, uh, what kind of tagging and classification do you prefer? Would you prefer IP sub, uh, subnet, IP source? Um, would you prefer VLAN? So there's all different types of ways of actually classifying a tag against various criteria. But at the, at the simplicity of it is, is what, what's your scale, right? So, so what is your scale today? How many, how many devices? Because if, if you're dealing with things like IPv6, which is it's supported across v4 and v6, it's analogous. You're then dealing with higher scale, right? Uh, a, a, a v6 endpoint will have multiple addresses and so forth you have to be concerned about. So it, it, it is a, it is, this is the year where group-based policy will really begin to take off, in my humble opinion, um, because of the, the the work that we've done, and, and I think last year was almost a proof of concept, kind of kicking the tires. Hey, I want to I want to test VLAN to VLAN segmentation. Can I do that across a fabric? I can. Okay. Well, that's that's kind of cool, but the use cases weren't as prevalent as they are right now, and and our solution is much more mature. So um, bring us involved in those cases, and, and we'll we'll make sure that the the right questions are being being asked. This these this slide kind of um, redescribes the the previous slide of the different architectures. Um, what about you know EVPN multi-homing, core distribution, campus fabric IP clause? Uh, they are all EVPN VXLAN constructs, just depending on where they are in the network. What's nice about the first two is the, the use case around the access layer switches doesn't change. And if it's layer two and these are just standard lag devices, those devices don't get touched at all. So now you build a method or procedure around how you replace the core effectively. And then campus fabric IP clause, mandatory for, for group-based policy. So if you're extending VXLAN down to your access layer, that's where your GBP tagging really begins at that point. So if a customer is interested in micro-segmentation, campus fabric IP clause, right? Does that make sense? I mean, do, do these architectures, okay, I just. Yeah. Services block is something we have taken from our data center folks in CRDC where customers are interested in, and these would, this would be applicable to a larger customer who wants to keep the, the, the core very lean. What does that mean? That means that they've got a core layer that they want to, to be used to route packets as fast as they can. They don't want to place the burden of encapsulation and decapsulation of VXLAN on that layer of the network itself. And so they can offload that. Services block is a way to extend and talk to outside of the fabric. So if I've got critical infrastructure devices like DHCP servers, radio servers, obviously WAN routers, firewalls, um, you plug them into the services block, treat that as just another leaf pair or access pair, and now the core can do what it does really well, which is route traffic. So when we build the fabric, we'll show both options. We'll actually show, hey, we'll combine this on our core, so the core is gonna connect directly to a firewall cluster, or I can deselect the option, and we could build a separate services block. That's where the gateway exists, essentially. Okay, so let's talk about, um, Abby did a great job of talking about wired assurance. I'm gonna spend a couple of steps to go through the build. And then we'll um, we'll we'll describe what you're going to see in the demonstration. And then we'll we'll jump into it. Before we jump there, there's one question online yeah. that I wanted to get answered. No problem. Um, and that is, as uh, someone's been looking at your product, it's like this is all great, but there's one missing piece around uh, a campus network, and that's .1x authentication. Huh? You you partner with multiple solutions. Is it, does Juniper have anything in the in the works to kind of bring .1x into MIST? So so um, so. We've been talking about uh, this for a while. In the last mobility field day, I suppose, we did speak about what, right. we, are, what we are foring into. So you will see a solution that's baked in, again, born in the mist cloud, a cloud-based radius service that's yep. going to hit you. And it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's public knowledge. We've discussed about this in, in, okay. in mobility field day. We're absolutely doing it. Excellent. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yep. Very good. 
Great question. I think that's a really good question. Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. Okay. So the first, uh, the first option when we when we build out a campus fabric would be to choose the topology and allocate the the, the device roles. So one of three topologies, right? EVP and multi-homing, addressing collapse core, core fabric distribution, or campus fabric IP cloth. So when we go through the build, we'll we'll talk about the different settings and options. What we've done is. We've, we're using eBGP as a protocol for our underlay and overlay, and so we've really simplified um, the AS numbering and how we build point-to-point -point subnets using a slash 31. All this stuff is there. Most customers keep the defaults because they just work, but they can be changed just depending on what the customer feels like, right? what they're comfortable with. And then we select the devices and where, they, where they're positioned within the build. In a five-stage class, which is what we're gonna build, we've got two core devices, we got two distribution devices, and we'll, we're going to originally build one access layer, get that oper up, up operational, and then we'll add a second access layer and make sure we got full routing. Right? All that's done really within the first step. The second step is the second step could actually be predefined. You can build through MIST wired assurance templates. So my VLANs and my subnets are here. I can build that template and ingest that, import that into the build, and select that as an option, and we'll show that. We use things like Anycast IP addressing. When we push the, the boundary down to the access layer, which gives me a single IP address across all my devices and a single MAC address, right? Very, very simplistic. Um, and then we, um, and then if, when the customer sees how simple it is to build a VRF, you know, outside of guest Wi-Fi, right? They begin to they begin to go down that path. They they realize that there here are users that are typically part of the the single autonomous system, not from a VGP perspective, but they all communicate. We'll put them in one VRF. And then the guest Wi-Fi VRF is completely segmented from everybody else for obvious reasons. And then maybe there's an IoT VRF. So the, the VRF concept that typically is very difficult when you provision it through CLI is really simplistic when we look at the, the MIST piece. You select the, the VLANs, and that's, it. that's really it. And then the next phase is you, you interconnect the ports. You, you connect the adjacent layers together. And the telemetry through LLDP will tell you whether those ports are the correct ports or not. So when we build the system, EVP and Insights will, will pull all that telemetry in. We'll, we'll see that the, the fabric is built, green is good. If there's red involved, the BGP peer is down, and it could be down because we actually chose the wrong port. Or port one is connected to distribution one when, it, when actually LLDP is telling us it's distribution two. So that's part of the third step, and the fourth step is just applying the intent apply the configuration. So the, the build is relatively straightforward. If you had basic information, VLANs, subnets, whether you want to introduce routing instances, and then the port interconnects, that's really all you need to, to build the fabric. Uh, one thing we wanted to emphasize as part of the build out, honestly, is those questions that were asked there are all things that campus administrators do today. We did not want to introduce anything that is not new or you know, con all the constructs that I spoke about. We wanted to keep it to a point where how can we migrate an existing campus in traditional based routing into EVP and VXLAN easy with, our, uh, with, with the simplification. So the questions are all things yeah, that, uh, that you do today with your existing Yeah, we're not, we're not trying to stump you, right? They're, they're relatively straightforward questions. So um, spend just a couple seconds on this slide and then we'll, we'll jump in to the demonstration. Um, it just greatly simplifies the EVP and VXLAN build. That's really the, one of the great benefits of Campus Fabric. It reduces the complexity in how the technology is built. Um, MTU optimizations, you wouldn't believe. So if you look at an underlay, that's an MTU setting. If you look at uh, a bundled Ether interface, that's a different MTU setting. If you look at the layer three boundary, that's a different MTU setting. And these are all settings that we've taken from our, our experience with data center builds. So all of that information, Anycast is another one. All the information is pulled under the covers when we build it through the, through the, uh, through the fabric. So multi-homing address the collapse core piece, micro-segmentation through IP clause. Um, when multicast is introduced, we recommend an IP clause as well to push the layer three boundary close to the access layer, right? So we can participate and spare the fabric, you know, multicast traffic. Um, layer three boundary at distribution layer is another option where if, you, if we're dealing with scale, uh, where next top addresses are very high, maybe we push the layer three boundary from the access, typically a smaller platform, to the distribution mo model, right? So that that device, which is higher performing, is gonna have higher scale. 
And so those are, those are kind of questions that we kind of ascertain through discovery, right? Give us a sense of, of where you are today, where you want to go in three years, five years, um, you know, use cases around security, use cases around scale. Those are very important to, to, to kind of peel back the onion on. And then when we talk about our build, there are two ways you could build a fabric. One is on a site by site basis, right? I'm, I'm on, I'm on site, Santa Clara Hilton, I'm going to build a fabric. Think, good. Or I can build an organizational level approach where uh, that, that will, works well for larger campuses, universities, where they've got a, a, a core layer and then they build multi-pods. So those pods are all connected through the core layer and then the core layer jumps off to a firewall or what have you. We're going we're gonna to show that in our build, the organizational level. Do you need that organizational level fabric to be able to pass those uh, group-based tags no. through the, so the sites? It could, be any, it could be any one of the builds we do. So it's got to be a campus fabric IP clause. Okay. Right? So VXLAN down to the axis, but it could be a site build or an org build, irrespective. Okay. And then our pla <laughs> I have to talk about our platforms, right? The, the e I'm, I'm part of the EX switching platform. I've talked so much about MIST today because I love MIST. But uh, these are the platforms that we manufacture. Um, industry leading last mobility field day, we, we introduced the 4100. So that's a, a really, really solid access layer switch, fixed form factor, PoE. Um, the 4100 and 4400, which is the other access layer switch, is a... Um, uh, incredible amounts of telemetry. So flow-based telemetry through the Broadcom chipset is something that um, we feel we differentiate ourselves on. The types of telemetry, um, DOS mitigation actually at the access layer through the Broadcom chipset, we support both that type of technology in the 4100 and 4400. Um, and then we've got obviously uh, distribution core, the 9200, very, very popular enterprise-based chassis uh, modular switch. Um, and here's the breakdown of the different layers and where the different products sit within each layer. So question for you. Um, so now we're bringing um, EVPN VXLAN to the, camp, to the campus. Yes. I'm very familiar with it in the data center. Yes. So do things need to be built consistently between the data center and the campus? And then also those group tags, um, can they flow? Yes. Campus to data center. Yes, and so in, and I'll speak to our uh, data center and our campus deployments. Um, so our data center deployment and campus both support group-based policy today. The beauty of group-based policy is that the, it's just a, it's just a tag within the VXLAN header. So there's no reason why our GBP policy couldn't work with any other vendor that adheres to the standard. No reason whatsoever. It's just a 16-bit header within the VXLAN construct. Um, the 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 data center approach, how it's built. And the campus approach house built is different. Um, most of most of the time, it's because you've got higher scale and more micro more uh, more, if you will, um, multi tenancy in the data center piece. But the constructs of how the fabric is built are almost the same. The MTU settings, AnyCast, um, equal cost multi path, the policies that we use for multi protocol BGP, those are almost those are almost on that. You can't even look at the you can't see the differences between the two. So where, um, and so MIST is really focused on enterprise and, and how that's built. So, and we're, we're always tying data centers and our campus fabrics together. Uh, sometimes you do it through CLI if there's no approach, but through MIST, we can build that border gateway and exchange information with any other, other type of data center. So really the dif difference would be the, the multi-tenancy piece and, and the scale. And you'll hear terms like, you know, leaf spine, core, distribution, access. I mean, they're the same thing, just different terminology to separate data center from, from access or data center from enterprise. Um, 